Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. I know many of you, including myself, have waited for this moment to actually uh, be upon us. And now it is. It is time for the TSL3 Bracket Show. I'm DJ Wee. Joining me, as always, is Chill. And we also have special guest Liquid Tyler joining us. Guys, what is up? What's up, fellas? Chill. Hello. Are you with us, too? I'm oh, here, too. There we are. Uh, so what we're doing here today, obviously everyone kind of knows about, uh, the TSL three, how we've gotten to this point. We've played, uh, I can't even remember how many weeks, I mean, eight weeks to actually get in qualifiers with several TL opens before that. And now we get to announce all of these, uh, great matches that we're going to be seeing 32 players divided into 16 matches, obviously, um, for the round of 16 and that is going, or the round of 32 will begin, uh, on March 19th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, the way it's going to work is we're going to be releasing each matchup individually, and after four right. matchups, we're going to have a couple of videos that will show you uh, the the highlights of how many of these players actually got to be here. I'm sure you either participated in the vote or were a part of uh, all of the other selection processes here from TSL. But guys, I am very excited and to uh, have Tyler here. Tyler, maybe you can give us a little bit of history on TSL. I know Chill, you could chime in on here too. But uh, you know, as a player, you've seen some great success and uh you know what does this tournament mean to you for all the all the starcraft one players this tournament was just the tournament to go to it had the prestige uh for so long it was just wait for wcg to come around and that was that was the yearly thing the annual thing and then tsl popped up and we were like wow this is like our tournament this isn't a tournament for a bunch of different games this is from our community it's for us and it's for us to shine the production level was always great from season one, and it was just such a wonderful experience. And now to see it going into to StarCraft II, uh, just so happy to see that that like this tournament can continue to be successful uh, the way it has in StarCraft One with uh, the extraordinary invites we've got. I'm just so hyped for it. And I think that has to be one of the biggest things that anyone, uh, you know, and everyone is talking about is the caliber of players that are going to be here just from just about every region. And Chill, this has also been kind of a big event for you. You know, same question, you know, what does TSL mean to you? Well, for me, I, I think where TSL shined in StarCraft 1 was just the production and the hype. I mean... There were so many threads with people putting artwork together. We had the incredible TL artwork team, yeah. uh, the hype videos, the intro videos. It was really the first time in StarCraft 1 where we saw a, a full production brought together. And actually, to kind of speak to that, there was a lot, of, a, a lot of tournaments that popped up after the TSL that tried to mimic the format and mimic the production, and it just it kind of fell flat. So what I'm really excited for is when you know we have Glider kick it into full gear with these sketches. We have uh, the production value really kick it up, all the hype, all the interviews, and uh, I guess we'll be announcing soon all the commentators that are brought in to, to uh, commentate the TSL3, but it's, uh, you know, the cast you would kind of expect and then some. So uh, I'm really excited for all those aspects of TSL3. And some of those details will be announced very soon, but you won't have to wait long to see this bracket fill out because without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and go to our first matchup that we will be seeing. Uh, and, and I don't know that the games will necessarily be played in any sort of order, but the first matchup that will be revealed here for the brackets. And uh, we have actually got a special guest who might know a little something about one of the players that uh, we're going to be announcing <laughs> here for the first matchup. It is it's going to be Liquid Tyler versus the just uh, allowed into the TSL three qualifiers, Mouse Strelok. And uh, obviously, it's going to be a U.S. versus Ukraine. Tyler, you're defending champion. And, uh, you know, I'm going to let you make the first comment on this matchup. Sure. Well, this is, I, you know, this is one of the my favorite ways to start this tournament out is to be playing a guy. Strelok, who is an excellent StarCraft 1 player, just brings me back to the old TSLs. If you saw Strelok in a bracket back then, you'd be like, wow, this is going to be a good match. Just immediately off the bat, happy to happy to watch Strelok, and I'm uh, happy to play Strelok. But 
thinking about who's going to win, how I feel about it, I'm going to have to say, you know, I just played at, a, at Assembly in Finland and I was able to take that match. So from a competitive standpoint, I'm pretty happy uh, being able to play in first round. I love the PVT matchup right now. So pretty much uh, just a great matchup for me every way you look at it. Well, in PVT, a popular matchup right now, especially from a spectator's point of view, this will uh, be uh, one of the first matches that we'll be seeing in the TSL3. Chill, what are your thoughts on this matchup? Well, as Tyler just said, I like to to take it old school. I mean, these are two old, old yeah. school StarCraft players. Tyler against Straylock uh, had a lot, of, uh, a lot of matches in StarCraft 1, now taking it to StarCraft 2. I think this, this heavily favors Tyler. Uh, in this matchup, I, I think many people will agree that, but I think Straylock showed his upset power in uh, in the match we just watched uh, when he took down Select 3-0. So definitely not a foregone conclusion, going to be an interesting map. And uh, this is going to be the broadcast order, Wheat. So th this is going to be okay, March a March 19th broadcast. We're going to see uh, Tyler against Straylock. Okay, that's thank you for clarifying because I wasn't sure if I was just going to have to uh, keep correcting myself the whole broadcast. So that will be a first matchup that you'll see in the TSL3, folks, and uh, that'll take us on to our second matchup. Chill, why don't you introduce this one? Who's coming up next? Okay, so we're going to take it to Warcraft 3 against Korea because we're going to be seeing Prey Thorzane who uh, qualified through the TL Opens, not an invite or anything, against TSL Fruit Dealer. Uh, famous Zerg player uh, made some splashes in the first few seasons of GSL. Now quieted up a little bit, but I, I, I don't know what Thorzane can do. We're, we're going to very quickly see how Korea does against the foreign scene in TSL 3 in this one of the first matches. Well, and that's one of the exciting points that we'll be talking about throughout this whole thing is the fact that we are going to see, uh, you know, uh, all regions from the North America to the Europe to the uh, Korea uh, and SEA regions, etc. Now, Tyler, I, I want to talk with you about this as well. TSL Fruit Dealer, uh, of G a GSL champ. Um, and, uh, you know, Thorzane having some experience himself, but having to play against a Korean in the first round. You know, what are your thoughts on this matchup? It's got to be hard for any of these players uh, that have to play against a Korean in the first round because these Koreans are just so hyped up. There's like an aura of a invincibility around them almost, especially these real S-class uh, players like Fruit Dealer who have won a GSL. What, he, what Thorzane can think about is that Fruit Dealer might not be the hottest player lately. But on the other hand, it's right. really tough because Fruit Dealer's ZVT is like legendary i think i think his zvt is amazing so i think thorzane just he's just got to be thinking you know i'm playing a zerg i'm not playing fruit dealer i'm playing a zerg right. i got to show people what i can do well and that's an interesting point because artosis who uh made several comments and uh decided to you know uh, give these over to the tsl bracket show kind of the uh over their opinion one of the things that he says is that this match will be decided by fruit dealer we all know fruit dealer to be a very a tightrope like player and uh, that's even something that artosis says here in fact he says if he plays slightly more conservatively than his normal a hundred percent win for him and i like what he says here next because i do think that it's going to be tough to find an opponent that you can sort of practice for fruit dealer against but artosis says there are simply no zergs on europe whom are good enough to truly prepare thorzane for this match what do you guys think about that yeah i'll let tyler get, give his thoughts oh. first of all Sure. Um, well, I've heard comments like this for quite a while now. Um, you know that Zergs might be Zergs in Europe or might be a little weak in ZVZ, and sometimes you know now it's sneaking in uh, Terran or Protoss who isn't so good against Zerg in Europe. It's also because you know there aren't any good, aren't enough good Zergs in Europe. Maybe not enough variety. Obviously, there are some good Zergs in Europe, but just overall practice kind of hurts a little bit. I'm not sure totally what to think about that. I think there's definitely some truth to it, but I think it, it's not like a roadblock that's impossible to overcome. It might be something that right. makes this a little more difficult for Thorzane, but he has access to you know watching every single uh, right. you know big match that Fruit Dealer's played. He can study Fruit Dealer's style, 
And Fruit Dealer can't do that on Thorzane. Thorzane has, you know, the element of surprise here. He can practice his mechanics. You know, mechanics aren't a, a matchup specific thing. So Thorzane sure. has no limit on, on how good he can become uh, mechanically. So strategically, he has the element of surprise. Mechanically, there's no problem there. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't read too much into that. It's definitely an interesting tidbit, but I wouldn't get carried away with it. All right, I like that. I think that was a pretty solid answer. And you know what? I especially like the bit on mechanics uh, because I think that it will be true across the board here for all of those matches that you know uh, that that have these particular types of of playoffs of faceoffs. So uh, match number three, guys, uh, as we continue to roll through the brackets here. Um, this guy's looked really strong as of late. Uh, I know Tyler, <laughs> yeah, you good. made some. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I know you've made some comments recently about him. OGS MC, a Prodos player, you might have heard of him, uh, going up against uh, Sierra, who is a Zerg player, and obviously MC is GSL uh, Season 3 champion. He defeated both Jinro and Rain on his climb to the top. Uh, he played a very strong PVZ over July recently, and I think, well, at least uh, initially self-proclaimed by Tastosis that he is the best Protoss in the world but mc undoubtedly has uh backed up some of those claims with a lot of great victories so cr on the other hand relatively unknown uh, got most of the points actually as you just saw in the video before we got started i i believe that one played uh where he got second uh against kaz there and uh guys your thoughts well on this i mean we've kind of talked about the upset there are there th there are 13 Koreans uh, invited into the TSL3, so there's bound to be some upsets. I don't think it's logical to assume all 13 Koreans are, are going to advance into uh, the round of 16. However, uh, if I could speak candidly, I think Sierra is pretty fucked in this matchup. I, I don't Ooh. really... He has the element of surprise, <laughs> but if MC kind of you know stops for a second and says he's playing a foreign Zerg, he should play a little bit safely. And I see Artosis has two two letters written down under his thoughts, which are just MC followed by a period. <laughs> so Sierra is going to have to work extremely hard to make some magic happen, and I, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah Tyler, I, I would you agree? agree? Yeah, it's just, you know, and and I hate to say it, but matchups, you know, races come into this a little bit. Thorzane playing a TVZ. I can give him a little more wiggle room on surprise uh, possibility than Sierra going into a ZVP. Seems like, you know, Protoss definitely has some very safe ways that, that it, they can play a PVZ. MC does something, you know, like three gate expand, gets hallucination real quick and just since hallucinated Phoenix is everywhere. I, I can't see him losing, um, but whether or not he plays that safely, uh, we don't know yet. Maybe he will hundred right. percent win if he does. If he takes a chance, Sierra gets a window of opportunity. I think. Do you think we might see some matchups where some chances will be taken, Tyler? Yes, I think so. And I think sometimes Koreans, uh, they're just you know they're a little they're in a little different world than everyone else, and sometimes they don't realize maybe how heavy of a favorite they are or how to take advantage of their superior skills. They just don't realize it, and so they just play the same way that they always do, and that right. play is almost always involves taking chances because that's it's how you have to play at the highest level when you're also playing other people at the highest level. And I don't think they perfectly understand how to play when you have superior mechanics, when you have superior experience. They don't know the adjustments to make every single time. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Well, that will be uh, the third matchup in the in that particular bracket. Chill, drop it on us. Game number four. All right, so this is going to round out uh, the March 19th broadcast. We're going to take it back to uh, PVT and both foreigners of the Korean <laughs> world. We're going to have Duckload White Ra playing Protoss against Loner Prime We playing Terran. So... Uh, you know, Loner has been making some splashes in the GSL. He's been doing some good work uh, over on the Korean server. But, I mean, White Ra's a beast. Uh, Artos is kind of uh, echoing that sentiment, saying they're both two awesome players. He gives the advantage to White Ra, White, 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 White Ra slightly. 
Uh, he's saying Loner is great, but White Raw, just a beast. Of course, we all saw him take out Boxer back in StarCraft 1. Uh, I would also tend to favor White Raw in this matchup, slightly echoing uh, Artosis, but uh, what are your guys' thoughts? Well, Tyler, go ahead. What do you think? This this is a tough one to call, <clears throat> and I think uh, even though these might not be considered you know, some of the two best players in this whole uh, bracket, it's probably going to be one of the most exciting matches to watch. I, I think agree. they're very evenly matched, and White Ross certainly has, you know, he's a fan pleaser. The way he plays is just fun to watch, and especially when he's winning, it's just fun to watch. Unfortunately, sometimes he breaks your heart and he tries to do something and it just doesn't work out. <laughs> and you're like, White Raw, why? I, I wanted you to win this time. Um, but Loner, you know, you can't underestimate uh, how good it, how helpful it is to have good solid practice. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he's been uh, getting some good solid practice. White Raw, um, not quite sure how prepared he's going to be. But you know, my gut instinct is he's going to think. This is the TSL. I'm going to put my my best play into this possible. So even if he's not completely prepared right now, by the time he plays his match, I think he's going to come in uh, swinging, swinging pretty hard. And like Artosa said, he's a beast. Yeah, and I would I would agree with everything you said. You know, in terms of like you know looking at some of these matches, and it's very possible we could see some quote unquote blowouts. But uh, I think that this match is going to be inc incredibly exciting. Uh, certainly, echo what you guys say that it could go either way. And and I like what you said about White Ross, sort of uh, you know being a, certainly a fan favorite. He he sort of like wears his heart on his sleeve, not only in game but out of game as well and so he is a big fan favorite and I think that might be another reason why he would want to do really well you know obviously because it is a TSL 3 but I think that you know realizing I, I want to you know, make my fans happy, and uh, that would be a big win for him, of course. Setting up some amazing games, and we could probably sit here and now go, well, man, let's talk about how these brackets could flesh out and play, uh, you know, bracket craft and, and whatnot, but uh, we're, we're, we're not going to do that. You know, you could obviously see, just by staring at the graphics, some of the yeah. awesome matchups that could inevitably happen, and uh, you know, that's just as exciting. Now, I do believe there will be a con Contest um, throughout the yep. TSL three. Uh, do you know uh, a whole lot about this, Chill? Well, there was a bracket contest for uh, TSL one and TSL two, and what it basically comes down to is someone will put up uh, all thirty two players into the bracket. You take it into paint and paste who you think is going to win, and then whoever gets the exact bracket right or uh, comes closest is going to win a prize. So it's always fun to, you know because there's the safe route, you can obviously take the Korean server person to win every time, but <laughs> inevitably there's going to be upsets. So it comes down to the player who predicts those upsets correctly, uh, or not even player, it comes down to the person who's going to predict them. On the forums, going to win a prize. It's always fun to follow through. And I'm going to kind of uh, quelch the, uh, the kind of discussion that's been going on, how these brackets were decided. Uh, they were seeded. Uh, TSL number two finishers one, two, and three were seeded one, two, and three. Then they seeded the Korean invites based on ELO. Then they seeded the TL Open winners uh, based on if they won or points based on ELO. Then they went down to the players who qualified uh, on points based on ELO. And then they seeded it in a standard tournament for, uh, bracket format where one plays 32. Uh, and then they play, let me make sure I get this right, 15 plays 16, and then you have the bottom side. Anyway, some professor can go and crack the brackets before we reveal them, so go ahead and do that, but I don't think you have enough time. <laughs> All right, well, uh, they can ponder and think about that for a little bit, guys, because we're going to take a quick video break, and we want to show you how, well, essentially the highlights from the TSL qualifiers, I believe this will be number three and four, and then when we come back, it'll be the announcement of game five, six, seven, and eight. More to come here. Stay with us. This is the TSL 3 Bracket Show. Don't go away.
Guys, welcome back to the TSL3 Bracket Show. I'm DJ Wee. Joining me is Chill and special guest TLAF Liquid Tyler. Guys, thanks. And we are going into the next portion of the bracket. And we'll go right into it. Game number five. Um, and it, I, what I really like about this matchup is in, in recent games, and if you're not caught up, shame on you, but in recent games, this person was eliminated uh, to great, great dismay to a lot of the fans out there. Uh, I am MVP has left GSL, but he'll be able to bounce back uh, possibly in the next one and also maybe show some power here in the TSL3, and he is going up against Millennium Edelscott. Yeah, I think this is another one of kind of David versus Goliath matchups here where we had right. uh, Adel Scott, you know, made a fan out of us in the TL Open by just making a lot of gate gateway units and barreling over his opponent. And it was really interesting, kind of innovative play. But I, I don't know if that's going to work on kind of the highest stage. So, you know, Artosis, again, uh, kind of emulating those thoughts by just saying MVP. Uh Adel Scott, you know, he, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve. It might be something MVP isn't used to playing against, but at the end of the day, is he going to be able to take out an S-Class player like MVP? I, I don't really think so. Tyler, what do you think? Well, Adel Scott, I've been watching him for a while now, and he comes up with some great strategies, some great game plans going really deep into games, you know, 20 minutes into the game. But... You know, he doesn't have, for example, MC's kind of Protoss mechanic. So sometimes I, I've watched over his shoulder at a couple tournaments now, and it's like, oh, you're playing so good, you're playing so good, and then his macro just slips up a little <laughs> bit, and then he misses a timing or something like that. Yeah. So, And then on the other hand, MVP, God, he's just been rock solid until the latest GSL. And he lost those, I mean, the way he lost those games, it was him making mistakes. It was like, yeah. yo, man, what are you doing? So uh, absolutely rock solid, but then he shows some weakness in this latest GSL. And if he shows some weakness like that against Adel Scott, um, you know, maybe early to mid game before mechanics start really widening the gap. Uh, between the two players, then I can see, I and this is honest to God my opinion, I can see Adel Scott taking games off of MVP. Whether or not he can take the whole series, that's a little bit more difficult. He could definitely take one game. Can he take two games? I don't know. Right. Um, and you know what? For some of these players, even taking that single game, Tyler, could be as as awesome as winning. Well, you know, obviously winning would be really <laughs> awesome. But, you know, that that is a big accomplishment that any player can walk away from and say, you know, that's that's a great thing to have. So um, I kind of go back to what Chill said in both uh, and you said, Tyler, about we will we will have upsets and there will be surprises because in some cases, Adel Scott will be able to get every piece of intel that he possibly can versus MVP. Of course, he also has some amazing practice versus Protoss as well. So uh, Artosis does say MVP, and uh, I think that he'll probably be the uh, selection favorite in this one. But the reason for these qualifiers and the uh, access for some of these players to make it in there is to see what sort of magic can happen under uh, TSL3. So either way, I'm excited uh, for these matchups and especially for how these brackets will fill out because match number six will be Root QXC versus MVP Genius. And uh, QXC, um, <laughs> I, guys, if you did not know the story behind this, QXC lost at, at DreamHack and then decided to go ahead and make it into the TSL qualifier. He played for like 18 hours from the <laughs> land. And if I'm not mistaken, had to like beg to let him continue to play <laughs> or he had to go somewhere else to finish it off. Uh, but, uh, you know, he really wanted to make it into this competition. And for that reason, I think he's going to put a lot of motivation, a lot of practice into it. But his opponent is genius. So uh, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Tyler, we'll start with you. Uh, just minor correction. It was from Assembly, actually, that he did that. Assembly, was, thank you. Yeah, it was just a funny story for me, actually, because... Uh, you know, generally at the end of a LAN, everyone goes out and has has a good time, goes out to a restaurant or whatever. 
and uh, just hangs out. And he's just plugging away at the TL Open because uh, it was a North American one. So it ran really late for uh, European hours. And then I log on to uh, teamliquid.net the next day to see a PM that he sent like at midnight or 1 a.m. local time. Like, hey, where are you guys at? Want to hang out? <laughs> like he just <laughs> finally finished <laughs> and wants to hang out. So yeah, uh, completely irrelevant to the bracket show, but funny story, I think. Um, he's QXC, just not getting in the perfect practice regiment these days. Um, you know, he's studying there in Europe, so he can't just practice all day the way Genius can. And I think if he could get a, a couple of months of full-time practice in, this would be a lot more interesting match. But I'm just going to have to say, Genius, a uh, pretty solid player, nothing wrong with his PVT. I'm just going to have to lean toward Genius for this one. And uh, Chill, uh, you know, your comments, of course, are Tosis, pretty much saying Genius. Uh, I think for many of those exact reasons, uh, hard to catch up on this one, but what do you think? Yeah, I think QXC is is an amazing player when he's in practice and when he has time to kind of go through the motions, make sure his mechanics are all the way there. I think he's going to bring some really, really great strategies, and it's going to be up to Genius to kind of defend the the one or two base timing all-ins that, that QXC is going to bring. Uh, I, I think Genius is a heavy favorite, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that QXC could take him down. Um, all right. Well, that is uh, match number six, Root QXC versus MVP Genius. And uh, let's go ahead and chill. I'm going to hand God. it over to you. Uh, this is, <laughs> I just this saw is the two names. Amazing one. Good God. Yep. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you, but I'm just really excited. No, take we... it. Uh, you can announce it. Game seven. Okay, so game seven is going to be... Uh, basically the winningest player in StarCraft history against uh, probably one of the fan biggest fan favorites ever. We're going to have OGS Nada against Liquid TLO. Boom. Everyone's like, yes! I cannot <laughs> wait! Um, that is also, sick. if I'm not mistaken, the only quote-unquote random player um, in, the, uh, in the TSL3. Um, I believe that is... That is correct. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it is nada. And I, I well, let's go to our Tosis comments first because he says, and I quote, God, I love TLO. It's too bad he plays not a first round because nada is nada. If he finds some <laughs> urge to win the TSL, he's got a damn great chance. And I want to talk a little bit about that because our Tosis has said that he feels that if nada really wanted any of it, that he would get it. Now, for some players, not necessarily something that they like to hear. Um, and and I'm not sure that it's completely accurate. But what do you guys think? A legend, uh, undoubtedly, in TSL3, is it something that he wants? Do you think that, uh, you know, the you know who is the favorite? And, and do you think TLO has any chance? Well, I guess, I guess I'll jump in. If I'm not mistaken, Nada is, Nada is still in the GSL, is he not? Yes, he is. So uh, he's, he's, he's going to have play his... against July Zerg. Right, right. Okay, we were talking about that earlier. Uh, he's going to have his attention a little bit divided, whereas TLO, you know, when you get announced that you're playing against basically the legend of StarCraft 1 and up-and-comer in StarCraft 2, he's probably going to have all sights set on taking down Nada. I think... Uh, you know, you got you have to give the edge to Nada. I don't think there's anyone who's going to say TLO is the favorite going into this match. But TLO is a beast, and he showed many beast. different play styles. If he's going to bring random to TSL three and to this match, that's another kind of check mark in his favor. As we've seen, uh, he can play all all races equally, and and playing random, you know, it's difficult to play a random player in the early game, especially. Korean against foreigner, you know, they're always, they're probably going to be afraid. They don't know their style. Are they going to be cheesed? And that's going to be another little advantage TLO can put in his toolkit. I put this match fairly even, actually. And Tyler, I what really, about you? Yeah, I really, I really hope actually that TLO picks Terran. And actually, I, even as, you know, not just a fan of him hoping to win, but as a spectator, I actually think in this case, TVT would be the most exciting matchup to watch. Uh, TLO is phenomenal TV, TVT, 
and Nada, you know, I used to think he had a really good TVT, and then he got 3-0'd by Marine King in a GSL match, so I, th- I believe that was from the last season. Right. And I that, I just like cried the whole time because Nada is actually my favorite pro gamer ever, despite me being Protoss and him being Terran. As soon as I learned about him, I was like, yes, he is he is pro gamer, pro gaming incarnate. Like he is pro gaming. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, I'd love to see TVT here, and then I'd actually I don't think Nada is going to be like I have to win the TSL, I have to win the TSL, I have right. to win the TSL. I mean. He's, I think he's he's going to more want to win the GSL, and even if he wasn't in the GSL, <clears throat> I'm not so sure that he would uh, be as dedicated to the TSL as TLO is definitely going to be dedicated to the TSL. And I think that's a good point. Um, and again, anything could happen. If there was going to be the scent of an upset anywhere... I'd actually have to say that this match could certainly produce exactly that for all the factors that each of you, uh, each of you mentioned. And the fact that, you know, TLO is awesome and he's pulled out some amazing wins in in his time. Uh, I know he might not be the favorite from a sort of, uh, you know, who's going to win perspective, but he's certainly going to be a fan favorite going into this one. However, everyone will be cringing in both directions for wins or losses because I think that people just love these two and it's kind of one of those mashups that you want to see happen and uh, it finally is happening. So that uh, is going to be absolutely phenomenal and I cannot wait for that one. So match number eight to uh, finish and complete this side of the bracket is going to be Empire Kaz, a Terran versus Liquid Hey Pro, Zerg. It's going to be Ukraine versus Sweden. And um, I, I like some of the notes here that Kaz is kind of quote unquote low radar, but very well respected among players. Um, and in fact, when Huck was practicing for assembly on EU ladder, he was winning uh, like 80 of his games against top EU's pros, except for Kaz. Um, so he won over quite a few great opponents and this to me, Kaz is kind of the perfect player to have qualified into TSL three, because I really do believe that he, he, he is going to do well. Yeah, I, I think this is a match that definitely has some story behind it. Both players have, have a lot to prove. You know, a lot of the liquid guys have gone to to various lands or made splashes in the GSL. I feel like Haypro is the last player uh, who hasn't really put himself on the radar yet, and TSL three may be you know maybe the moment for him. Uh, I think he's relatively unknown, uh, even even still to this day, uh, for a lot of fans. And he has an extremely uh, strong Zerg. We saw him in Code A uh, play play very very well. I think he's actually the favorite here. Uh, Kaz, you know, he's not down and out. He has uh, some some great practice partners. We saw him play very strongly in the qualifier. Uh, Artosis says he thinks a lot of people will be choosing Kaz for this as he's been doing well in Europe. But uh, Artosis kind of reiterating the, the Korean bias here, saying, hey, pro has better practice. And uh, even though he hasn't delivered lately, he's a great player in SC2 and SC1. Uh, Artos is saying that that Haypro is the favorite here. Uh, I, I think it's fairly even, and both players have to treat this as a very, very important match in their StarCraft II careers. Well, this is another opportunity, um, you know, for Tyler to comment. Also, another teammate that is in the competition. So obviously, there's got to be some team camaraderie here as well. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think this along with Loner vs. White Raw is going to be one of the highlight matches of this round. Uh, just very, very closely matched, I think. I'm going to, maybe this is a little biased. I can't help it. I'm going to have to favor <laughs> Hapro here. But, you know, the only reason other people aren't favoring Hapro is because, uh, like you said, he doesn't have as much exposure. Or maybe Chill said that, I can't remember. But he hasn't really put himself out there as much. He hasn't gotten the opportunities to because of his choice to move to Korea and uh, try to participate in the GSL. But as someone who has some more exposure to him, even if it is just practice games, I can maybe have a little better perspective. 
sure and and agree with artosis here and everyone else who has this perspective who gets to uh, have more exposure to hey pro that he is an excellent player and his results have not really been reflecting his skill level so far and that's just that's just the way uh starcraft goes is you have to enter a lot of tournaments and uh you right. can't win every single one and he's just been on kind of a bad run so far so i think his time is coming up and uh it would be an excellent uh time to showcase his skill uh beating Cass, who's you know there's a lot of hype around him too uh very very good comments and of course we'll be seeing that on uh the I believe the second broadcast night for the TSL three. So that will complete the left side of the bracket. We've got 16 players there, eight matches. We're going to take a quick video break and show you the TSL qualifier highlights from five and six. And then we'll come back and give you matches nine, 10, 11 and 12 to begin the right side of the bracket. Good guys. Don't go away. It is the TSL three bracket show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the TSL3 Bracket Show. I'm DJ Wheat, joined by Chill and Liquid Tyler. Guys, before we move on and start filling out the right side of the bracket, I want to put uh, all of us on the spot, and I would like to hear from you guys. I'll start with you, Chill. You get, uh, you get to be first. Your most anticipated match that we see there on the left side of the bracket and why? Most anticipated match... Mm-hmm. I am going to say White Raw against Loner Prime because I feel like it's a fairly even matchup. Both players have a little bit to prove, and I am a huge White Raw fanboy, and I like PBT. All right, great, great. Tyler, what about you? I'm going to take probably the easiest one, OGS Nada versus Liquid TLO. I think that's going to be almost everyone's uh, most anticipated match. Uh, Number one, it's uh, you know one of the foreigners, quote unquote, playing against one of the Koreans, and probably has the best chance against the Korean we've seen so far. And number two, it's freaking Nada and it's freaking TLO. So what can you do? It's just going to be amazing. And I would actually have to just split my vote and say you're both right. So congratulations. <laughs> there was not a wrong answer on that one. You guys are both correct. Uh, I think both those games are going to be phenomenal. Um, and they will all be great. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure well, we're going to see some surprises in there. But yeah. Weed, I want to say like some of the players we haven't hit off on our list, like going down, we, I, I mean, there's like Rhett, Idra, Boxer. I know. Like I know. Mondragon, like there's some big names that are yet to be revealed in this bracket. Hey, look, chill. If you just want to get on with it, you should just tell me. So uh, <laughs> without further ado, here we go. Uh, match number nine. It's going to be time for a team kill in the TSL three. Maybe you guys historically can tell me if uh, we've ever had something quite like this. Fnatic Zen will be taking on Fnatic Phoenix and one player will eliminate the other teammate from the competition in that first round. Uh, it is Taiwan versus Peru and uh, you know it's just kind of how the brackets turned out so uh, chill let's start with you uh, Fnatic versus Fnatic what are your thoughts? You know I, I just thinking back and nothing's jumping out at me as having a high profile team kill this early on in the bracket so uh, I, I don't think it's really happened of course the brackets are just prearranged so that's just the way it turned out uh, I don't know who's the favorite here I haven't seen too much out of Sen lately, I've, I've seen him jump around between Protoss and Zerg being reasonably successful with both of the races, but I haven't seen anything that's really struck me as, you know, just incredible the Sen we saw back in, in StarCraft 1, whereas Phoenix, I've seen a lot of strong Terran play coming out of Phoenix. So just based on my bias and lack of information, I, I would tend to favor Phoenix in this matchup. And of course, the racial dynamic you know, it's Terran versus Zerg, so there's that. <laughs> Great. Thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> Tyler, <laughs> what about you? Uh, I'm not going to try to say who's favored, but I will say both of these guys, I think, have excellent, excellent multitask. Um, both uh, StarCraft 1 players, both known for kind of being everywhere on the map at once in both StarCraft 1 and in StarCraft 2. 
And so I'm just going to say I'm hoping to see some wild matches between these guys with medevacs everywhere, muted harass everywhere, baneling drops everywhere, even, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I just want to see it all. And I think this is going to be a great match. All right. Well, uh, kind of uh, adding on to that, what Artosis had to say about this one was uh, IMO. And can't you just like hear him saying that on the cast? Uh, IMO, tasteless. Uh, this is based a lot on how much Sen is playing right now. Uh, Phoenix is a great player, very accomplished, and unaffected by pressure. That being said, even though the young Peruvian is immensely talented, Sen is a legend. Whenever he is truly motivated, it will take a monster to beat him. I feel like this was like written for some newspaper, and uh, I don't know. Like Artosis knows how to nail those things. So uh, I'm also. It, uh, you know, I en I don't envy these two for having to play one another and sort of right. eliminate. But it's it's you know it's sort of those ones the 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 movie from back in the day. Uh, I don't know where you know all these great swordsmen had to train together, but the only one who truly made it out was the one who could be left standing after they all tried to kill one another. You know, you got to be the last man standing. And the same is true for the TSL 3. So it would have happened inevitably. You might as well get it out of the way. Round number one. I will be excited for that one. I think the whole ZVT, uh, as you pointed out, Chill, will play a big part of this. Also, the fact teammates know teammates very well. And that can make it a very difficult match to play. So uh, with that being said, there we go. First one on the right side of the bracket. And Chill, give us number 10. Number 10, we're going back to Warcraft 3 against Korea in the Protoss side of things. We have Prey Night End, bit of a, you know, making a little bit of a splash. And he's playing a, a relatively unknown player, Imyo Hwan, Slayer's Boxer. I don't think anyone is cheering or jealous of what Night End has to go up against in this. Everyone is going to be cheering for Boxer. I'm cheering for Boxer. Boxer is my hero. It's, I have it's a boxer. theory. Uh, about this okay so okay. it even says in the notes here that uh boxers level recently in starcraft 2 has been suspect i think we can agree right. with that that he dropped out of code s pretty fast you know my my prediction is is that slayer's boxer did that intentionally so that he Trained can throw off TSL, all yes. opponents for the tsl <laughs> i mean obviously that's what happened. But no, in all seriousness, um, you know, even Artosis says, and we'll lead off with Artosis and, say, and see if you guys agree with this, but um, he says that this is going to be the most interesting matchup in the first round of the TSL. Um, he says, I have gained huge respect for Night End recently. His builds are well thought out and executed strongly. Boxer, on the other hand, is Boxer. It will be an awesome match, even if it is one-sided, and he can't wait to see how both players will prepare for it. Tyler, yeah, there's kind of you. a factor of, of hype versus reality here. I mean, on the hype side of things, it's off the chart, you know, going for Boxer. But if you step in kind of into the real issues for a little bit, Boxer, you know, he's he's not looking like the dominant S-class player that he once was, whereas Night End right. been, been stomping yep. some nerds out. So this will definitely be one where both players have to come to play. And if you're Night End... You've got to know that you know you have a re respectable shot at taking this match down. Yeah, I right, think now real Knight Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Night end, if he if he wants to have a chance here, he's going to have to game have a game plan that takes control of the game early and takes decisions away from Boxer. Sometimes you can do that by being really aggressive and just you know saying, "Hey, Boxer, that's all you can do is defend right now. You only have one choice." Or, you know, you can expand really aggressively and be like, Boxer, you, you got to attack me right now or else you'll never be able to keep up with me later in the game. You got to do something, I think, a little bit extreme or something a little bit clever with uh, maybe some what Artosis likes to call active units like Phoenixes or Blink Stalkers where you can, you know, be putting pressure on the map. You got to do something. You can't just sit back and let Boxer's game plan play out. That's the last thing you want to do. So I think Night End uh, needs to put some thought into how he's going to take control of these games. If he can take control, I think Boxer's, uh, you know, his mechanics are a little bit suspect. He's never been the best mechanical player. He's always been more strategy-centered kind of player, except for his micro. But his macro has always uh, kind of been weak. So I think Night End has a window of opportunity here. He just he's He's got to put 
hours and hours and hours of preparation into whatever builds he's going to do. All right. Well, some great comments coming out of both of you guys. The only thing that I would really add is that I believe as of late, some of Boxer's biggest faults have actually been TVTs. And so, you know, one thing I'll be curious about when I uh, check this match out is, you know, how that will affect things. Um, I'm not sure if it's just, you know, having issues with the matchup or what he likes to do or how he likes to play it hasn't really translated over well. Uh, but I think, Tyler, you're absolutely right. Uh, letting Boxer command the game is going to be exactly what you don't want to do. And even if you can get that little tiny advantage and keep compounding it and compounding it, uh, maybe something can happen here. So I will partially agree agree with Artosis that it certainly ends up being an interesting matchup and regardless because it is boxer playing it is the TSL 3 um, so let's see if this player can pull it out um, and so match number 11 guys I have to say um, you know two players that arguably everyone kind of knows about but I think that this is just kind of a cool matchup for so many reasons it is a classic TVZ it is a country uh, battle it is Sweden versus Sweden and that means the players will be Liquid Jinro and Moro for match number 11 um, and you know I I'll throw it off to you guys right away I'm excited for this matchup I like some of the comments that are that are made here but but uh, let's hear what you guys have to say first. Tyler, let's start with you. This is this is a, a match that you could see in the finals if some European tournament was going on that Jinro could make it out to, and you saw Jinro on one side of the bracket and Mara on the other. I think a lot of people would be like, God, I hope they face each other in the finals. And here you get to see it first round in the TSL, which isn't bad seating or unlucky seating. It's just <laughs> this whole bracket so packed <laughs> with good players that you have some of these first round matches that look like finals. So first of all, obviously now I've revealed, I think this is going to be a really exciting match to watch. But Jinro, man, he's solid. We saw what he did against Idra and in, in Clash of the Titans show match. I think that's probably going to be a little bit scary for Morrow. I'm sure he's aware of that. And right. uh, but Maro, you know, his ZVT is pretty damn good. It's uh, it's not something you can overlook. So uh, I gotta I gotta lean toward Jinro, of course, uh, teammates, and uh, you know he has the success in the GSL that you can never un underestimate so, or uh, overestimate something, some kind of estimation. You <laughs> can't make a mistake with it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, toss it off to chill. <laughs> Well, I think, yeah, uh, think? L looking back at some of the other matchups, we've kind of had uh, one person is kind of the, the Goliath and the other person is the David, or we have kind of the unknown against the known, and we're wondering, is the unknown player going to come out to play? And we're kind of painting it that way. This is a match where both players are well-established. We know what they're going to do, and we know they're both going to come out to play. So I think of all the matches, this is probably the one where you can expect the most the most solid play and uh it's really going to come out to who can just edge out a tiny advantage in this match it's going to be a really really interesting matchup yeah and you know we'll uh take it to artosis comments because he straight up says he makes a prediction in his comments that general will beat moro and he says moro is without a doubt a great player the problem is he's not as great as the players whom general beats on a regular basis moro has to pull out something rather special to take down the super solid general and you know the only things that i would say on top of that is i do believe it's somewhat of a jaded statement from our because he gets to see Jinro play in probably the most electrifying environment that Jinro could possibly be playing in. Now, granted, I'm not saying that playing in GSL three is, 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 you know, is that much better than playing in the TSL three because Jinro is obviously uh, very keen as to, you know, the significance of the competition. But with that being said, I think sort of playing this online, no, you know, explosive adrenaline, flashing lights, sort of comfort of your own home. I think right. that equalizes things a little bit more and then goes back to what both of you guys were saying about the fact that, um, you know, capitalizing on mistakes and uh, just playing that solid, solid game um, could could let it go either way. So um, uh, this one well, is yeah. most def definitely going to be one of my favorites. 
Go ahead. The other thing I just wanted to sneak in here is if you're looking at their average skill, then yeah, it's easy to say one player is going to beat another one. But even if you put that put this at a dominant prediction for Jinro, say a 7-3 matchup, you know, it, it, it's only best of, I believe it's best of five, best of three or best of five. But maybe if they play it out 10 times, yeah, Jinro takes the majority of them. But who's going to come to play that one day? You know, it's not something right. where you can look past Moro yep. in any sense. Yep. All right. Well, uh, that will be a good one. And uh, why don't you take us into the 12th match, the fourth one on the right side. Chill. Well, we haven't had too many mirror matchups. So this is one of the first, and it's going to be uh, a Protoss versus Protoss. We're going to have Mao's Hasuobs versus Liquid Huck, uh, making a little bit of a splash in GSL Code A. Uh, Hasuobs, I believe, is from Warcraft 3. Yes, the note saying he's an old Warcraft 3 player. Has an interesting style, took down the likes of Fury, Kawhi Rice, and McLeod. Uh, so definitely has a little bit of room to, to make a name for himself. Uh, and what do, you, uh, what, do you, what do you think, Tyler? PvP is a tough matchup these days. I can say that much. Uh, I would say, you know, if Huck plays 10 Terrans and 10 Zergs and Hasuobs plays 10 Terrans and 10 Zergs and then the guy who wins most of those games gets to advance, then <laughs> advantage goes to Huck. But when they have to play each other in a <laughs> PvP, it's a little it's a little more iffy. And right. Huck, uh, of course, self-proclaimed top three control in the world. He's very confident <laughs> in, in his micro. And uh, the, the PvP matches always depend on micro heavily even if it also depends heavily on the build orders you choose it it always also comes down to micro so can huck make a difference with all of it all of his control skill i don't know he's gonna have to he's absolutely gonna have to and this is this right. is gonna be a nerve-wracking match for huck fans to watch and hasuobs uh, I gotta think, you know, I haven't been watching his career closely, but I gotta think this is one of his biggest opportunities to, you know, make a huge splash on the scene. If he can just totally. bring down, bring down Huck 2-0 in the first round of the TSL, people are gonna be, uh, you know, looking twice at him, maybe even three times. Yeah, and uh, I I echo everything that that you just said. You know, I was very impressed with Hasu uh, making his way in in this TL Open. You're gonna actually see some of that play in the video that's coming up in just a moment. Um, but the other thing too is that you know Huck has had mixed success over in Korea. You know, but just based off of the actual uh, his actual performances. But I feel like in this season in Code A. He's doing really well. I feel like I really see this new level of confidence on Huck that may have been uh, more uncertainty even back in the early MLG days when, when he was doing very well uh, there last year. But I think that him winning in GSL Code A and, and really reinforcing that confidence um, – is only going to help him in this matchup. So Artosis had this to say, guys, Huck should be able to take this, but upsets are possible. And we'll learn that throughout the competition. Well, not a completely one-sided match. Hasuobs just seemed to be a level below Huck, who is obviously ripping up on the Korean server and Kode right now. The one thing which is really in Hasuobs' favor, though, and might change the tides, is that he can practice PvP nonstop with fellow German PvP baller Sake. So uh, Huck is super busy playing PvP for the GSL, so the match could be quite close. And Artosis does bring up some good points, but either way, uh, another great match. Uh, I, I, Tyler, I like what you said about Huck fans might be on the edge of their seats, but that's where fans like to be. <laughs> you know, if there's not something on the line, it's just not that exciting of, of a game to watch. And, you know, every single game will be that way in the TSL. So I am totally, totally stoked for that. And uh, guys, we only have four more games left to announce. And at this point, all those guys out there are like, oh, I can do the I can do the math and find out who's left <laughs> and, and to figure all this out. And you probably can, or you can just wait till we watch these next TL Open highlight videos. This should be seven and eight, and then we will be back and we will have the last four matches that will round out the TSL three. I'm DJ Wheat. Joining me is Chill and Liquid Tyler. We'll be right back. Don't go away. 
Welcome back. It is time to find it out and reveal the final four matches here on the TSL3 Bracket Show. I am DJ Wheat. Joining me is Chill and Liquid Tyler. And guys, a quick reminder, you're not going to have to wait very long for the TSL to be kicked into high gear. The first cast will be March 19th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's plenty of time for the hype to build uh, into what is arguably going to be one of the ballerest tournaments of 2011. It is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Guys, we got four more matches to go. I'm excited for this. Also, chill. I wanted to make sure that you mentioned something about the PokerStrategy.com raffle as well that's going on. Yeah, so uh, a couple of announcements that are gonna you'll be seeing on TeamLiquid.net pretty soon if they're not already there. Well, the raffle's been there for a while. All you need to do is go into the TSL3 thread, click on the Win a Trip to Korea TSL3 raffle thread, sign up for fifty free dollars through PokerStrategy.net, uh, and then you can. What do you get? I think you get a free trip for two to Korea, thousand dollars spending money, uh, accommodation. You can go check check out the GSL. Meet up with the Liquid guys. Meet up with Artosis. He's he's kind of my StarCraft hero, so you can go through all that. Uh, also <laughs> coming up soon, we're going to be releasing uh, the commentators. So uh, you'll I guess you'll know who's going to be commentating what. We'll be releasing the schedule, so you'll know when to book time off work and uh, tell your friends to get away because you need to watch StarCraft 2, TSL 3. And what else will we be, we be releasing? We'll be releasing the rationale for the ranking system. So a lot of people confused because I misspoke explaining how the brackets right. were figured out because I don't fully understand it. So there's a full explanation. How did these players get seated, how they did? And uh, right. that'll be carried over in future TSLs. So this will uh, become the Don't standard. forget the other thing that will be released. Um, and that'll be Chill's phone number with that uh, with that thread that Chill was just talking about. So if you have additional questions, you'll be able to just call him up and talk to him directly about them. Of course, I've already forwarded that number to you, DJ Wheat. <laughs> He's like, I changed it the week after I gave it to you, buddy. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, as you can see, we uh, we have got several names up here on the list. There are eight players left for all of this. And uh, at the end, we'll, we'll give you the same question that we had before. Which match are you most anticipating? But we've still got four more to put up there on the board. And for those that don't know, maybe they've been living under a rock. They don't know all the invites. This could be like the most exciting you know next 15 minutes that they've uh, had in a while but most of you are going to know what players are going to be coming up but not necessarily the order and i'll start with match number 13 probably you know in the history of starcraft just because i look up to zerg players uh being one myself uh, i've always liked this the way that this guy has played and i'm i'm an older guy i'm old so I like players who are kind of <laughs> old, you know, I feel like I share something with them. Uh, and so I am NST is taking on Goody uh, in a matchup. And I'm going to again start with Artosis and then I'll fire it off to you guys. Artosis says Goody is a nice guy who's had some moderate success in StarCraft 1 and StarCraft or StarCraft 2. NST is the best goddamn player in the world. <laughs> NST will eat Goody. That's it, quote for quote. <laughs> Uh, and nothing against Goody. Uh, he is a good player, but I kind of have to agree with this. Plus, I, you know, being a fanboy myself, I think Nesty is going to pretty much, uh, you know, have have just a Zerg party all over this Terran base. Or <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> well, I, I mean, Goody's, yeah, Goody's yeah. got some fame for kind of turtling and drawing the game out. I think it'll at least be a fifteen-minute game, but at the end of that. You know, it's gonna be Nesty standing with his hand up. So I, I don't, I don't give Goody any chance in this matchup, to be honest. Tyler, <laughs> yeah, nothing against Goody here, but I think if you, uh, you know, if you're one of the Liquid Bet players, which is always fun to do, <laughs> um, <laughs> once this match is played and you can see how many people voted for one guy and how many voted for the other, I think this will be one of the most one-sided. Um, matches that, that the fans are <laughs> predicting here. Everyone's going to yeah. think Nesty is going to take this and Goody, man, if you win this, it's going to be the most epic what? thing That one guy. Ever. That one yeah. guy who's betting the farm yeah. on Goody yeah, is going to just yeah. crush forever. Uh, <laughs> I think that's pretty funny. And you want to know what else? Uh, chill. 
You remember that one time that guy called in a weapon of choice and he's like, why you always be like, you know, so-and-so's great and everything, oh, but, but. <laughs> and, and Artosis <laughs> did that here. Goody is a nice guy. He's, that's a moderate success, but so anyway, <laughs> we're all guilty, aren't we? Uh, I'm excited, uh, regardless, even though it may be one sided because there's always that chance. There's always that chance. So chill match number 14. All right, uh, we're going to bring it back to the Liquid players. We're going to have Dignitas Naniwa, who's had uh, some pretty good success, uh, had a crazy high ladder ranking. He's going to be taking on Liquid Rhett, who uh, has also had some good success and a good high ranking. And this this strikes me as a match similar to uh, Jinro versus Moro, where there's no kind of outside factors. Both these players are going to come to play, and uh, I think we're just going to see a really, really solid matchup here. What do you think, Tyler? Yeah, this is this is another one of those. Uh, well, it's European versus European, so that's always exciting for for the European uh, fans. And these are just both some really talented players. Neither of them have stuck out a ton so far in the history of StarCraft II, but they've played well enough that they both have their their fan bases. They both have a lot of people cheering right. for them, and they did play in, at Assembly. And I will say that Naniwa just kind of fell apart there. Rhett, I believe Rhett two owed him, and I I watched some of the, some of the games, and Naniwa just looked like he was not playing his best. So I wouldn't read too much into that as long as Naniwa can bring his best to the TSL, and this is this is going to be a good match. Now, um, you know, I think I want to kind of go back uh, to one of the things that you said is that, you know, both players um, have had success in some in some areas. But let's actually change that just a little bit, because let's let's actually talk about potential. Um, I think Rhett is one of those players that just has this sick level of potential that like we haven't quite seen yet like Rhett reminds me of those anime characters and the manga characters that like i'm so in love with like the yatitaki japan or the naruto where they you know they 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 just are this kind of powerful ninja when they start but then they are like leveling up and you know <laughs> destroying entire villages and shit like i have seen Rhett like get 200 200 faster than any human i think on the face of this earth and i just feel like when he gets into that zone his potential is just stupidly ridiculous and so you know uh, just my thoughts on it i really like naniwa as a player but i think in terms of potential like Rhett is just on the brink of this explosive breakout i've always felt that way about Rhett, and you know um I always use the excuse for him that, well, he did start playing a lot later than everyone else and wasn't playing in the beta and stuff. And I will continue to make that excuse uh, because I do think he has had some success, but there's still more out there for him. So anyway, I'll shut up. What did, what did Artosis have to say, Chill? He said that for him, this is uh, the second most in interesting match in the TSL. He's looking forward to this match. He's not a Naniwa fan to start with, but recently he's been having, uh, he's been impressing Artosis. In ways he thought he would never be impressed. Ooh. Man crush Tickler, for sure. Yeah, wow. tickle artosis pink. <laughs> Naniwa wins <laughs> battles. I don't think a hundred percent he would win. Hmm. The kid absolutely wow, this artosis loves Naniwa. The kid absolutely <laughs> knows how to control a battle. On the other hand, as you probably know, I know I love Rhett. Ridiculous heaps of talent. Rhett should take it, but if Naniwa somehow shows Rhett's weakness, and then he has two brackets explaining what the weaknesses are, but we won't talk about yeah. that. Yeah, then, <laughs> then he might say, take it's it. It's impossible. Like, how could they have the suitcase that's been handcuffed to this person with the secret documents? And <laughs> but yeah, I, I think as you were saying, Rhett's greatest strength is also his greatest weakness because I've seen him, you know, make drones up to fifty-five and then die to ten lings that just ran into his main base. So it it'll it'll depend which Rhett comes out to play. I think Naniwa. Uh, you know, we're aware of what he can do. I think the question mark for me, at least, is is which red is going to come to play. Two more matches left to go, guys. And uh, I have to say that I am uh, pretty excited for this matchup. You know, not only because of the players that are in it, but there's one particular player in here that I'm actually... Um, 
kind of interested to see how he goes because he's like the Danny LaRusso of of StarCraft 2. I really believe this. The matchup is EG Idra versus Complexity Cruncher. And no, Idra is more like Johnny. And Complexity Cruncher is a little bit more like Danny LaRusso. And I want to tell you guys a story. <laughs> and I remember telling this story to you, Chill, during the TSL op or during the TL Open um, for the qualifiers. Is that Cruncher at last year's WCG USA event? Um, it was pretty much known at that point by the community that Warcraft Three was on a very quick decline. And he was talking about how he couldn't find matches in Warcraft Three. He could like he was so upset that people were abandoning the scene and were jumping to StarCraft Two. And like for a whole weekend, I listened to Slasher just basically be like, "Dude, stop being a pussy. Just just play StarCraft Two. Just you're good at Warcraft. Is <laughs> start playing StarCraft Two. And he resisted it for so long, and then finally he he made the jump. And like this motivation to get back into a scene, it wasn't that he even wanted to be like one of the greatest players. He just wanted to compete. He was just like, I just was starting to get good and the competition was awesome and then it's gone. And so the, you know, he's just got this thirst for competition and then you get, he gets pitted against EG Idra. Um, and you know, in the first round of the TSL, this to me has to be one of the most uh, exciting matches that I'm looking forward to for, for this. Um, and, and Artosis says Idra is way better than Cruncher, but you know, I will argue that when you've got a Danny LaRusso, you've got a guy that's willing <laughs> to do the crane kick and the finals, like <laughs> there, something crazy could happen here. So I'm going to have to disagree with Artosis. I mean, Idra is great. Um, I think a lot of people are calling me crazy. I'm always rooting for Idra, but there's just something about Cruncher's story that really interests me. Well, I remember seeing Cruncher in the in the Teal Open, and uh, honestly, at that time, I don't remember him doing anything exceedingly impressive. He made a lot of units, controlled them reasonably well, and I, I don't know. But I think the, the problem for Idra is that he's so far in the spotlight. It's so easy to get Idra replays, Idra VODs. No one's really going to be shocked which Idra comes to play. There's only one Idra. Right. And I think that's a huge uh, advantage in Cruncher's favor. If he comes up with some sort of game plan, not necessarily a strategy, just an overall game plan to take advantage of that, that that may be something Idra cannot uh, cannot completely overcome. Yeah, and I'm going to say this. Uh, North American Protosses know how to play one base against Zergs. That's, like, <laughs> that's maybe the best thing that you know happens on North American servers Protosses beat Zerg with one base but Cruncher who I think is great at one base builds PvZ which is might be Idra's greatest weakness uh he can also play a long game if he wants to he can play a long game that's what he showed in the TL Open I believe and uh you know he's he's got a range of abilities and Idra you know Artosis always ever so confident in Idra, <laughs> but I know for a fact Idra is weak against, you know, certain strategies that, uh, you know, sure. may maybe mainly one base strategies, but also a little bit of weakness in late game, which he might have, uh, you know, he just admits to it in his imbalanced show <laughs> where uh, <laughs> he's just afraid of late game Protoss, basically. Um, and that's what he might have to uh, overcome here in the first round. Uh, speaking of which, just throwing this out here, not trying to stir up drama or anything, but do we know the chance that we could get that PTR patch prior to this all happening? I haven't read I have no if there's idea. any schedule on it. Yeah, okay. okay. I, I don't think there is, but it could, I, it could come, but I don't think there's any schedule. Out. Okay. All right. Um, uh, well, uh, any other, any other final thoughts? I, I kind of like, I was looking through some of the comments here. I kind of like what slasher 
uh, not slasher, but Zalasher has to say. He says, Idra will either get caught off guard in the first 12 minutes or he will crush in 25 minutes. Now, you mentioned about the late game Protoss, and he has admitted to that. But I think that's probably like a, a great way to put it. You know, the, the strats that you were talking about, Tyler, they will come in that first 12 minutes. Otherwise, you know, if Idra gets yeah. to, to play his game, that's where, you know, the, the total breakdown may, may happen. So with that being said, man, chill. Who could the final two players be? <laughs> well, actually, we I'm reading on the forums and someone has the finals as Mondragon versus Marine King Prime. So suddenly yeah. Marine King Prime is, is in it. But... That's not going to be it if you didn't fail, uh, I guess, grade two schooling and you can do process of elimination. You're going to know that we're going to see what Mondragon can do, the seed from uh, from TSL2, second place finisher, against Z-Rax. I don't know how many Z-Rax fans there are in, uh, in the house, but if you had to put Z-Rax up against someone that, you know, relatively unknown, Mondragon, it's not, we don't know how much is he playing, what's his skill level at. There's been, I feel like there's just been rumors, like legends. Like, I've never seen a Mondragon game, but I talked to this one guy, and his friend played him on the ladder and, <laughs> and got this replay pack, and oh my god, he's so good. But no one's actually seen Mondragon, so I feel like he could come up to play and really wow us, or I, I, I don't know, or he could just be slapped out of TSL3 and go is, home smiling. I mean, is there any mystery greater than this one right here? <laughs> I mean, Tyler, have you ever seen him play? No, I have not seen him play. No. Well, Here, you know, even, I, even I, Artosa says the one thing I've heard about Xerox was during the Breda, where Nazgul felt he was strong. Having not heard much about him since then, and having Mondragon as an opponent, I bet that Mondragon takes this one. But he, <laughs> he doesn't actually like know that. anything like about it. Mondragon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be like, well. You know, he was a NBA champion, so he's got to be good at baseball, basically. <laughs> well, I, it's not quite like that, guys. I didn't mean to throw that. But, um, you know, it is interesting because on one hand, you've got data for one player. On the other hand, you've got accomplishments and at least knowledge of what they were capable of in the game's, you know, predecessor or uh, successor. Right. So, um, I, you know, I don't even know how you called this one. But I'll tell you what another interesting it's game exciting. because of that everyone yes. will be watching that game because they want to yeah. see if mondragon is a beast or if he plays zerg like dj wheats so and that will... you know i feel like there's no gray zone i feel like he's either going to come out and get manhandled by xerax and just not be prepared for what xerax does or he's going to come out and completely stomp out xerax like he wasn't even there I don't feel like we'll see a Mondragon who goes halfway. Yeah. Um, I no. can't wait for that one. I can't wait. And guys, yeah. there you see it. The whole bracket is up. And now let's do it. Let's uh, choose our most anticipated matchups here on the right side of the bracket. Tyler, I'm going to start with you. Oh, goodness. I'm going to have to say... Um, I'm going to say Rhett versus Naniwa. I'm expecting good things. I know Rhett's going to bring it. And Naniwa, I hope to see some interesting strats out of him and some good control as Artosis is now swearing up and down. Naniwa wins battles that are supposed <laughs> to be impossible to win. I'm going to hold you to that, Artosis. And uh, Naniwa, let, let's see it. All right, chill. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the foreigner scene and of Zerg players, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it down to Jinro versus Moro. I think they're both very very solid players they both know what each other is going to do just solid play and i think it's just going to be an all-out slugfest um man i i don't even i don't even know i i might have to agree with uh with tyler i mean honestly again none of these picks are 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 tough ones uh, are, are the wrong ones because all these games will be great. You know, the night in versus boxer match really interests me, but I think if it was like, we, you can only watch one, which one are you going to want to watch? I'm going to have to say Hasuabs versus Huck. I'm going to have to go. It also happens to be the only PVP in the opening rounds. And actually, is that the only mirror match with the exception yeah, of what I don't could know happen how, with this, Nada and how this rolled like this? 
Yeah. Yeah. Someone said there was no mirror matches, but there's definitely that uh, Hasu versus Huck. So I would have to agree and, and uh, go with that one. And uh, I mean, either way, you know, again, you could play like predictive bracket time and just be like, so and so could <laughs> face so and so in the finals. But there are some interesting things that you will see, you know, uh, like seeing, uh, you know, a, a, just a lot of players in uh, very strong brackets, but they're all crazy. They are all you know, crazy. You know what's really interesting? If you quickly take a look on the forums, uh, you know, StarCraft II is kind of the first time we've seen a union of different communities. So there's there's the StarCraft community, there's the WarCraft Three community, and there's also, you know, the North American community and the European community. And it's funny to see how sure people are of their players and of their countries. Just... Everyone's saying like, uh, LOL, people underrating Cruncher, he's going to crush right through. Or like, people don't understand how good Haswabs is. So that's really interesting to me, kind of seeing people really take a stand for their country or, or their players and just the assurance they have right. of how well they're going to do. That makes it that much more interesting for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Tyler, you know, you have the opportunity to, the only player in here that could uh, have a repeat performance. Is this the tournament yep. that you're going to, you're going to gun for that? Oh yes. This is just, this is such an incredible opportunity. I think everyone who's in this bracket should just feel fortunate that you get to play on this stage. This is just an amazing stage to play on. Anyone who makes it, you know, even just to the quarterfinals, everyone's going to be like, holy shit, that guy's really good. And if you can make yeah. it even farther than that to the semis or even to the finals, uh, everyone's going to love you. The prestige is just off the charts. Prize money <laughs> is not bad either. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm just I'm going to be all over this this tournament. This is this is the one for me so far. Awesome. Well, I mean, for a lot of the spectators out there and, you know, even chill kind of made mention of it to sort of the combining of all these different communities. Um, a lot of people didn't necessarily, uh, get to experience some of the early TSL. So this might be the first one. And so a lot of spectators really excited for what this is going to bring guys. Do not forget some major announcements coming on teamliquid.net very soon. One detail though, you've got to know, and that is the first day of competition. It's going to be March 19th at 2 PM Eastern standard time. And you are not going to want to miss that soon on teamliquid.net. There will be the casters announcement and then some additional information as far as schedule, uh, when you're, you know, so you'll know and be able to, uh, plan for when your favorite players are going to be playing and, uh, you know, some other details will be trickling out as well as the bracket contest. And, uh, don't forget about the poker strategy raffle as well. So, uh, guys, we are about to embark on, uh, you know, a very, very kick-ass competition. And I hope now that after the show, uh, and, and, you know, if you haven't followed some of the TSL qualifiers that people really do start building the hype right now, if it hadn't already been rolling, there are now people who are like, holy shit. I just realized how awesome this is going to be. You know, roll with that, guys, because I guarantee you it will be 50 times, 100 times more awesome than even you're thinking right now. What do you guys think? Yes. yes. I think it's... Uh, I'm reading... <laughs> yes. I'm reading some threads here, and I, I've... While you were mentioning that, apparently Rhett called out Naniwa. So I'm just waiting for oh, the boy. drama. You know I love drama, Wheat. So I'm oh, hoping yeah. uh, we have some more... Some more... Uh, Trash talking that always I I just can't wait for all, fancy. Oh yeah, the the trash talking, the drama, all the interviews <laughs> that TSL has going on. You get so much interaction between these players and plenty of time between matches for everyone to soak it up and just get super hyped for every single match. I just I I'm gonna wait until there's a thread I can just F five and just look in awe <laughs> as everybody because there's so many people that have not experienced TSL 1 and TSL yeah. 2 that they're now fans True. of StarCraft 2. They're in our right. community now, and you get to see TSL 3. It's your first look at it. I just want to see all those people going wild. It's just going to be like you know watching a five-year-old get a Super Nintendo on Christmas. It's <laughs> going to be amazing. Oh, my God! It will be. 
It really, really will be. Well, you know, uh, I, it's not here in our script, but obviously I want to give a personal thanks to all the guys over there at uh, Team Liquid headquarters uh, because they have made it really easy from uh, for the casters and Seriously? hopefully for the players too. Uh, over all the qualifiers and the teal opens, amazing opportunity for all the players uh, and, and even for, you know, as a caster. So I really appreciate them uh, letting us uh, cast those and all the hard works that they put behind it i mean you guys have no idea uh hotbed you know he might be he might be a little bit of a slave driver but i'll tell you what he does some damn good work and he makes things happen along with uh, all the guys over there rich and the mango and i know i'm leaving out a bunch of dudes but uh i want to just make sure that they all give some love so make sure that when those threads come up and those hype starts that you're also uh giving some mad love and praise to the guys that are help making this possible because this is a really phenomenal thing that's been put together here and it's it's two weeks away. We, I mean, two weekends from now, we'll be witnessing uh, the first four matches of uh, TSL number three. Oh, so it's not, it's not yeah. far away. Oh boy! I'm Better start practicing, excited. Tyler. I, I I already have. He already <laughs> has, baby. That's right. Someone just right. posted the Nintendo sixty four video, by the way. Which oh nice. nice. Nintendo sixty four. <laughs> I wish I was that kid. Uh, guys, uh, so it's been great. Uh, thank you, Tyler, for uh, coming on and uh, yeah, dropping some you. knowledge and your thoughts. Of course, we will be uh, watching uh, with intensity your matches as they quickly approach here on March 19th. So good luck to you. And you know what? I would really be absolutely tickled and thrilled if you could repeat performance. So you give it your oh, best, dude. Thank you very much. Of course. And uh, chill as always. Man, Chill, hopefully we'll get a chance to maybe cast some GSL3 games. I don't know. Yeah, I'm waiting for the caster list to, I to am see too. if I made the cut. It's like they, they won't put too. it up. I like had to submit a like a YouTube video, YouTube video? and this like <laughs> this like five page essay. I mean, I don't know. Hotbed made me do it. Um, oh, I did it like, too. It was more work than code A application. Yeah, and then he was like, you know, okay, just letting you know, your chances are probably around like five to seven percent. I'm like, cool. <laughs> I can. I'm. I'm okay with that. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, guys, uh, make sure to check out teamliquid.net for all those announcements that'll be coming up pretty soon. It's been a blast during all the TL opens. Also thank team speak for all of the, uh, all of the sponsorship they did of those. And of course, poker strategy for helping here with the TSL three. I don't think I got anything else to say. You guys, I'm, I'm done So, uh, any final words? No, that that's it no. for me. I'll, I guess I'll see everyone in, in two weeks when we actually fire this thing up. Hell yep, same here. yeah, we'll be there. Good luck, Tyler. We'll see you soon. Chill. I'm DJ Wheat. Thanks to Team Liquid. Thanks to all the audience out there. And in two weeks on March 19th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the ship will set sail. And I guarantee you it's going to be a bumpy ride. And that will be awesome. So, guys, we'll see you for the TSL 3. Peace.